Good afternoon, everyone. With floods pouring through the streets of Paris, 160-year floods across Germany and Bavaria, pounding hailstorms ripping apart thousands of hectares of vineyards in France. I'm actually going to make a forecast where the next 500-year flood is going to be. And I'm using an Allos flood reconstruction frequency map overlapped with solar cycles. The Pole River Valley flood frequency map overlapped with solar cycles. Taking a look through sediment and lake core drilling samples to find out when the floods were, when the temperature changed, how the rainfall changed, and it focuses on this area on the map right here. The drainage can only go off in two directions when this event happens. Coming down the river valleys out to Nice and Marseille, flooding them. The other direction will be in Torino, down the Poole River Valley, through Piacenza, and everywhere that you see that's dark green on this map going toward the Mediterranean is going to turn into a large lake that will be visible from space until all that water drains off out of there. If you've been watching the news, all you're seeing is incredible floods raging across Europe. Paris hasn't seen this much rain since the early 1900s. In Bavaria, the rainfall coming down there, the last record broken was in 1845. So they haven't had this much rain in more than 150 years. Massive hailstorms blanketing the Burgundy and Chablis area in France. Thousands and thousands and thousands of hectares destroyed by hail. That's in addition to the frost damage they received earlier this year. I'm putting out this 500-year flood forecast. It's going to be for Region 6 in the Rhone River along on the Italian border that drains off down in Torino. If we take a look into a couple papers here, mid-European lake level fluctuations and headwater valley response for climate changes in the Centre Massif in France, I started to use a bit of different software that allows me to link searching terms and I found two specific spots with great flood data using lake core drilling samples as well as a reconstruction of temperature and moisture for the last 1,000 years across the European highlands, Allos region, and the flood frequency, Rip that down into the base there so you could really see where the heaviest flooding was. The other paper referenced showed the last 1,000 years of floods for the Pool Valley. This area, Alos, steep drainage basin, right on the border with Italy and France. Topographic map so you can see going to the west is the French area. To the east, you're going to see Torino and that whole Pool River Valley there. The two yellow dots on the map are specifically where they took the core drilling samples out of the Alpine lakes to show where the flooding occurred and when it occurred. Also shows glacial advance and retreat and the amount of sediments inside the stream beds that also give a nice proxy of rainfall. Again, we're focusing on section six. The dark red where the two arrows are pointing, that's the only way and direction that the floodwaters can fall off of this. This will involve an atmospheric compression event that's going to usher in a once in a 500 year flood off these drainage basins. There's going to be so much water so fast it'll literally be a river pouring from the sky. When this happens, the drainage basin is going to start in Torino, flood all the river valleys, not like the Milano floods right now, but I'm talking something five, six, ten times greater than the Milan floods right now. An area further downstream in Piacenza, the water's going to continue to roll down and where it gets into the dark green just at almost flat level going into the Mediterranean is going to back up and flood an inland lake for a short period of time. And with that size, it will be visible from space. These are the areas here. These are the highways that are going to be affected. The amount of transportation that will be disrupted during this time is going to be mega. The teal green area in France is the drainage basin that's going to slide everything off down to the Rhone River and push a lot of it out into Nice and Marseille. Again, you'll see the two yellow dots. That's where the lake core sediments were based on the floods over time, just reconstructing it. The Verdon River is going to be 
completely flooded, so things along there, you'll see that. Also, when the water pours out here at the airport in Nice will be flooded. This will not be a usable airport during that time. The river floods coming down are going to be so massive that it will spill through the city and inundate the airport runways. How did I make my prediction on this? Let's go back. I took the flood frequency graphic out by date and year, and I started going through solar rotational matchups. And if we look at the largest flood dates on here, 1336, 1356, 1740s, you'll see 2016 matches up. It's a specific planetary alignment. The ancients always talked about planetary alignments to dictate what happens on our planet. As above, so below. And I've enlarged the orbital rotations. You can stop or you can reconstruct these yourself using solar system scope. 2016 through 2030 are incredibly powerful years that are coming up that will change the face of our societies. The graphic coming out of the other study was the floods in the Poole River Valley going back approximately 1,200 years. You notice the largest floods, I've labeled them A, B, C, D, E, and also I put the solar rotations, planetary alignments in each one of the graphics above. You can see it pretty much lines up when you get these parallel sets. We get another flood. We're back at 2016. Where is the flood going to take us? And I really like this interactive software that now allows me to tag search different words to link me to the different papers so I can really dive in and get some more research materials Let's take a look at 1910. This is what the floods looked like in Paris. They're not that deep yet, but if we take a look back at another reconstruction here, in the yellow box, when we've come out of the Dalton minimum from that wetter, cooler climate, there was a drop off into a warmer, drier climate. And you'll see in that transition zone is when these floods started to happen. This is the German flood the 1910 floods in Paris, you'll start to see wherever that line drops off that that was the transition point. We're down at the bottom here around 2016. This is going to flip itself back into a grand solar minimum, so we should start to see grand effects as the polar circulation index flips and our atmosphere goes out of whack due to the decreased solar wind which allows more oscillation in the atmosphere. When this happens, and it is happening right now, you're going to see grandiose storms on the 100, multi-100 year levels. We're coming screaming straight up out of there as fast as we went in, coming into a cooler, wetter climate. You can also expect at this transition crossing point here, we are going to have these types of floods, and that's why I'm pinpointing one single area on the map. And once you see all these linking papers, you can start to get proxies for everything. So if we're coming out into a grand solar minimum, it's going to get cooler and wetter. Let's just go back in time into Queensland, Australia here. Now in Queensland at the same time in the 1900s, they had epic rainfalls at the same time Paris was having their epic rainfalls. So I am calling along the east coast of Australia, Queensland, record floods, record snow, and record cold for the next two years. As we transition into the grand solar minimum, when we get to the bottom of the cooling, when we really get into that very coolest time coming up around 2023 to 2024, it's going to drop out and go into a drought as it did in the modern minimum. It's going to transition into a drought after about three or four more years. And when we look at these proxies, let's take a look. These were the massive floods in the Poole River Valley. I want you to notice the marks around 1250. 1400, somewhere in here, and then we go right over into Angkor Wat, and you'll start to see there's an inverse relationship happening there. There was drought at the same time it was flooding in Europe. And once you start to dig into this climatic information, you can see correlations and start to put a, together a pattern of where it was drying in one area of the planet, it was flooding or cold or wet in another area. You can get a proxy to work out what the climate will do in one area of the planet, then all you have to do is go back through time, line up the solar rotations, where the planets were in the sky, where they're going to be in the future in the next few years, and you can work out where it's going to flood, where it's going to get cold, 
where it's going to drought, where our crops will be affected, where commerce is going to be disrupted, all in a crystal ball fashion using the past and astronomical models for the future. The ancients always talked about cycles. This is a chart I put together here using Greenland ice core data with the collapse of the Chinese dynasties. You'll start to see the rotation of the planets lines up in a certain fashion that ushers in a grand solar minimum. This is 89 AD. Notice you get the parallel pattern. Then we come up to 1356, and that's exactly the period I've been talking about this entire video. Earth sandwiched between two pairs of Neptune and Jupiter, or Uranus and Saturn. Also in the Maunder Minimum, 1665, you'll see that same parallel pattern. Then in 1845, 1855, with the Dalton Minimum, you see the same parallel pattern. And coming up right now, it's begun already. This is the 2024 lineup. You'll start to see that we are matching exactly the last solar minimums. And once I can really work out where the floods are coming with the data that I have, I should be able to, with some degree of certainty, put this out as a forecast of where these atmospheric anomalies are going to happen based on past records. Thanks for watching. Hope you got something out of the video. You can truly indeed predict the future by looking at the past. If you like the content out of my video, I'm going to continue to do my research more into the forecast fashion versus just reporting on the news. I'm still going to try to do both, but I want to add in more of this forecast. I'm doing five different areas. The next one is in the deserts of North Africa, showing that it's going to intensify with the rainfall and what's currently desert will turn into food growing areas. The next one is down in Peru. There's some really great information on glacial advance and retreat, as well as flood records down there that shows what's going to happen. Australia, I pinged on that one already. I began a little research showing what's going to happen along the East Coast. We're going to jump up into China as well. And the last one will be the United States. I'll see within the next month how close I am with my five calls on the five locations. Am I getting close to hitting it on the mark? And if you like this kind of research reports coming out and you like this type of information being presented, please jump over to my backup channel on Patreon. You can support my work over there. I'll use all the money that's donated to me to continue to buy these reports spend the extra money for the different software that I'm using right now so I can continue to dig through these records and upload more videos.